Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make jewelry out of puzzle pieces. So I was asked to do this by a viewer. She asked me if I could figure out how to make jewelry with puzzle pieces. And I just thought that was such an awesome idea. And ever since I read her comment, it's been stuck in the back of my head. And so I went to the thrift store one day, and I wasn't even looking for puzzles, but I found some. And I got them dirt cheap, of course. And um, I came home and I started playing with them. And I have to tell you, I did not think this project was going to turn out as awesome as it is, but it did. I absolutely love these bracelets. They're so cool. And other than doing bracelets, I've done earrings. And this could also be done for a necklace if you want. But you couldn't really do a necklace that's like this bracelet, how it's designed. You would probably have to connect more, like, another piece right here, a puzzle, and the puzzle there, so it would lay properly on your neck. But, um, yeah, there's so many possibilities with this. I'm really excited about it. Um, this one here was the first one that I made, and what I did is I poked holes into the pieces, and then I painted the back, because I wanted to get rid of that brown cardboard color, and I also painted the sides, and then after that, I put some Mod Podge hard coat on the top, and I put some glitter on top of that, and I let it dry really well, and then once it was dry, I took a very stiff paintbrush and I just brushed off the excess glitter so I could still see the picture that's in the background see the berries it's really cute and after all of that was dry I took and um, coated it with diamond glaze to get this really shiny look how shiny these are it has a glass look to it really shiny pieces even the back is shiny so I did two coats of diamond glaze on the back and three on the top because I needed it to be more dimensional. I really love how that looks. And I also took, and I was just going to do jump rings in between to connect them, but I decided to put some 80 seed beads onto the jump ring there to make it look really pretty. And I put another one on the back to make it stronger. So that was the first one I did. And after I did this one, I did a, a similar one here, and I did a antique white on the back of this one because I have some white in these puzzle pieces and I did a bluish glitter on this one this one I did a very fine glitter it has like purples and greens in it I don't know how well that's showing up in the camera but I did that glitter on this one and after I made those two I wanted to experiment with more instead of just doing you know acrylic paint and glitter on top and glazing it I want to try um doing more colors and so I only have like six colors of acrylic paint in my craft stuff so I went to my nail polish and I have like 200 bottles of nail polish so there was a lot to choose from and so I painted this one here with the nail polish and it dried so quick it was really awesome and um I had this chunky glitter it's so pretty that I bought from Sally's on clearance it's really cute and I put that on top and then I glazed them, and I connected them together just like that one. And I used the 80 seed beads, and again I used uh, jump rings in the back to make it more secure. And I also made earrings. These are really cute. I love these. They're so shiny. And uh, yeah, I've had a ton of fun making this. It's really easy to do. It's a great gift to give somebody because it doesn't cost a lot. And if they love doing jigsaw puzzles... They're going to be really crazy about this. So now I'm going to show you what you need. Here is the list of materials you will need to make jigsaw puzzle jewelry. You will need jigsaw puzzle pieces and nail polish or acrylic paint. I'm using nail polish this time. I have a color here and I have a glitter that's going to go on top of my puzzle pieces. You're also going to need Judikin's Diamond Glaze. This is going to give us that dimensional, as you can see right here, look that's really glossy and glass-like on the top of our puzzle pieces. If you don't have Diamond Glaze, you could probably use Glossy Accents or Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. That you can find at the craft store, but I've never seen uh, the Diamond Glaze at the craft store. I've had to always order it online. You can also use beads if you want. It's optional. I just used 80C beads on my 6mm jump rings in this bracelet here. And if you're going to do the glitter on the top of your puzzle pieces, 
use the fine glitter don't use anything really big see how fine this is it's a very small glitter I tried using uh, the chunky like big glitter for them and it wouldn't stay on the glue it, it kept flaking off now this here I did call this chunky glitter but that's what it's called for your nail polish it's chunky glitter but it's actually the same size as this glitter here okay now to do if you're doing the glitter you will need a glue to apply the glitter and I'm using Mod Podge hard coat if you don't have a good glue to put on the glitter then what you could do is paint clear nail polish on top of your puzzle piece and while the clear nail polish is still wet go ahead and put the glitter onto the clear nail polish and it should work just fine and you're also going to need eight millimeter jump rings and I found eight millimeter to be the best to put into the puzzle pieces because I've tried the six millimeter and it was too small if you look here there's not much space so it's best to put the eight millimeters here and then put the six millimeters in between the puzzle pieces so you will need eight millimeter and six millimeter jump rings and you're also going to need a clasp of your choice I use the spring ring clasp so this is a list of materials and now I'm going to tell you the tools here are the tools you will need you will need a pair of tweezers and I just love this pair they're made by Beadalon. I use these all the time this is a must-have tool for jewelry making and also for crafting and if you don't have a pair I recommend to get the bent ones like this because I just use these all the time they're so awesome um, you're also going to need a bead reamer this here has a file on it so if the glue dries in my hole or the 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 glaze I can easily file it out with this this one here does not have a file on it but if the glue is still wet or the um, glaze is still wet I try to clean it out with this tool here you're also going to need a small paintbrush which is this one here to apply the diamond glaze and if you're going to do the glitter on top of the glue after it dries make sure it's really dry because I didn't wait and mine was still wet and I messed up my piece and I had to do another one um, after the glue has dried with your glitter you want to brush off the excess with a stiff paintbrush see how stiff this is um, if you have too much glue or too much glitter on your glue and you don't clean off before you glaze it it's not gonna look nice this one here I brushed off really well and you could see the pictures underneath of the glitter and it gives it a frosted look so this this is berries it's kind of hard to tell because the puzzle pieces are small but there are little berries underneath that and I just love that frosted berry look you're also going to need a hole punch this is called a euro punch and it, the name is peeling off of me so I put tape on it but this is the size that I'm using 1.80 millimeter hole punch I actually bought this for punching holes in bottle caps but I've also found that it works for cardboard and paper so this is a really good tool to have you're also going to need a pair of chain nose pliers and I have a bent nose and just a regular chain nose and this is the list of tools you will need and remember I always put the materials the tools everything down there in the description bar so you could see it all so I just wanted to show you guys to make this one here with the chunky glitter I first painted the puzzle pieces with these two colors and then I put this chunky glitter on it now I don't know if you've ever used chunky glitter like this before on your nails but you can't really brush it on you have to like dab it on to get the glitter to go where you want so uh, yeah if you're gonna use glitter like this you will have to like dab it on and this is the color that I used I love that um, I got all of these on clearance at Sally's beauty supply and this was the one that I used on the earrings but there's some really neat colors here I just love these so I just wanted to show you that and uh, tell you about how I did that one there the first thing we need to do is to punch our holes in our puzzle pieces and if you're making a bracelet you will need five puzzle pieces and this here has a little extension chain on it and this one measures eight inches so if you want a smaller bracelet you would not put 
the six millimeter jump rings here, we, you would connect your clasp directly to the eight millimeter, and down here you would finish off with the eight millimeter. You wouldn't add on the links, and that would give you a seven and a half inch bracelet. Now, also to make it shorter, if you want, with this one here, I picked out the X shaped puzzle pieces. I was thinking that I could connect them like this. Okay, instead of doing it the way that I did it. This one here won't turn, it's too tight. Um, I was thinking about poking holes here, so then I would have jump rings here and jump rings here, just like that, and I would have all my pieces turn like that. But it would take a lot of jump rings. So I already had mine poked here on the corners, so I decided to not do it because I had painted it, and then I thought of it after I painted it. So uh, that's another idea for you. If you want, you could pick out the ones that are shaped like X's, and you can poke holes in all four corners and you can connect them like that and it will make it shorter. Okay, so um, I'm going to be doing earrings, I think, instead of another bracelet for a quicker project. So with the earring, I only poked one hole here at the top. So I think I may use these two here. And when I do poke the holes of them, I realize it's best to poke the hole in a, like a big area. So like this one here if I were to use this one in a bracelet, I would probably poke a hole here and here. I probably would not do it here and here because it's too weak. So this spot right here and this spot would be the best places to poke the holes because it would be a more sturdier, you know what I mean, place to poke your holes at. So I'm going to make earrings and I'm going to poke my hole on this side because it's bigger than this side, this side's smaller. And so I just take my pliers and I center it the best that I can and I poke it and I gently wiggle it off and there is my hole okay I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna poke it on this side try to get it centered the best that I can and poke it okay so that's how you poke the holes it's very easy and it's a lot of fun using these pliers, poking holes and stuff, uh, especially the bottle caps. I really like doing that. So here is another option for you for the earring design. With this one here, I have a hole poked at the top and I have a bead and then I have my ear wire. But if you want, you can connect a jump ring to the top of this and then have your ear wire. And then down here, you can have another hole poked and then have a dangling bead down here. So there's a couple different options on how you can use the puzzle piece for earrings. So after our hole is punched, we are then ready to paint it. And I'm going to paint the back of this a solid color, and then I'm going to paint the top with this really pretty glitter. I found this for a dollar at Kmart on clearance. Awesome deal. It's usually like $8 a bottle. So I'm going to flip this over, and I use these tweezers to hold this still so I can paint it. Because if you hold it with your fingers, it's going to get all over your hands, and then you're going to have, you know, smudges on this. So the tweezers are the best. For holding this. Now if you don't have tweezers and you have bent chainos, maybe you could go like this and use your bent chainos. But uh, I don't know. I prefer this because I'm less likely to drop it. Okay, so I'm just going to paint this with my nail polish. And I do do two coats. And be careful that you don't go over the side because if you do, it will drip onto the front. Now if you want the front the same color, then you don't have to worry about that. But I want to keep that picture on the front. I like the, the center of the flower. Okay. And what I do is I let this dry, and once this is dry, completely dry, I then go and paint the edges. And I really liked doing this with the nail polish brushes because I felt like I had more control. See, I didn't get any on the front. When I use the uh, paintbrush 
here with acrylic paint I kept getting on the front so if you're doing the acrylic paint you'll have to wipe it off before it dries or it'll stick there so this is what it looks like and it doesn't look like I have any dripping on the sides. So I'm just going to let this dry and then once this is dry I'm going to show you how to paint the sides now that my piece is dry I'm going to paint the edges and to do this you want to have the littlest amount of paint on your brush so I kind of like wipe off all the excess and then I go in and I get just a little bit you don't want it to be a drip you want it to be a very small amount okay and then I find it best to dab it on like this be careful not to get it on the front and if you do you could just wipe it off okay So keep going, painting all your edges, and then when you're done, you want to do a second coat of the color if you feel that it needs a second coat. If you think it's too transparent, you could do a second coat, and do a second coat of color on the side, and then when that's dry, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so keep going. And again, keep looking at the top to make sure that you don't get any on the top, just on the sides. And by the way, if you're doing a bracelet, you're not going to have to sit around and wait for it to dry because you're doing five pieces. So once you do one piece, you paint the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, and then you start over again. So there's no time to sit around and wait for it to dry because you have so many that you're doing at one time. So both coats on the bottom and the sides of my puzzle piece is dry and now it's time to do the glitter and I'm going to do the nail polish glitter. If you decide to do loose glitter like this, go ahead and paint on the Mod Podge with your paintbrush and do a nice coat of it. And then what I do is I put the piece in a tray like this. This has the screw off um, corners. This one has two. I don't actually use those for this because the glue gets stuck in here and I can't clean it out. So I just... Um, put it in a corner so I put the puzzle piece in here I sprinkle on my glitter and then when I have a big pile of glitter I sweep it all to the corner with a paintbrush and I dump it straight back in a container so I don't waste so that's how I do this glitter but this one here is not messy because it's not you know blown all around the place I really love this color glitter it is so pretty Okay, so this one here, I don't really care if I get it on the sides or the bottom. If you want, you can put the glitter on the bottom. It's very pretty. Just trying to get it spread evenly on the piece. I'm going to turn it and do this side. And I think I'm just going to do one coat of that because that is perfect to me. If I do another coat, it might be too much glitter. And I can go back and play with it and make sure that I got it covered well and I have no bare spots. But that is really nice. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry, and then once this is dry, we are ready to seal the puzzle piece with the diamond glaze. Now I'm going to do the diamond glaze, and I like to do three coats in the top of the glaze and two on the bottom. And the third coat makes it really glass-like and very clear, and it's risen because it's you know it's a dimensional glaze. It's very beautiful. So I'm going to it take my lid off okay cut that and I like to hold this up off of my surface by the way this is a kind of an important tip because when I had it down and I went to put the glaze on it just squirt out 
So if you hold it up like this, the glaze very gently comes forward. Okay, and then I drip it on and try not to put too much on the first time because it will run down the sides. Okay, so just like that. That's probably good enough for now. I have a cat hair on there. I can't make anything without animal hairs being in, involved. Okay, so then I just take my brush and I go like this and I make sure that I bring it up to all the edges. Go around the hole. And if you don't have enough on it, when you turn the piece to the side when it's dry, you will see like a dimple to where you didn't have enough. So if you feel like you need more, go ahead and put a little bit more on. Just make sure that you go up to all the sides. Okay, this looks pretty good. I think I need a little bit more right here in this side. Pop that bubble. Okay. I'm going to let this dry now. You will know when it's dry because right now it's kind of hazy. It seems like a milky color. That will go away and it will be crystal clear when it's dry. And when I go to do my second coat, when I flip it over and I do the bottom, I then take my brush and I go like this and I go to all the edges, okay? And I do the edges twice. So I mostly just do the top with three coats, the edges, and the bottom I do with two coats. Because um, I want the top to look really pretty, okay? So go ahead and let this dry. And of course, don't forget, if you're doing a bracelet, you got four more to do just like this. So keep going and once yours is dry, I'll show you what to do next. So since I have to wait on my other piece to dry and it's going to take a while, I'm just going to show you how to finish the, it off with this one here. So in between coats you may notice that the diamond glaze will go into the hole. So in between coats, if you can remember, uh, take the bead all and put it in your hole. It may, it may be totally clogged over. We have to gently have to push it. Make sure you put your finger at the back. It's going to poke you in the finger, but it's not going to be really painful. Um, you just want to do that though, because if you go like this, you, you might break your puzzle piece. So I go like this and I gently push and turn. And then when it comes out, I go like this and I spin and spin and spin it and I clear out that hole best that I can because if it's really clogged up with diamond glaze or glue from doing the glitter your jump rings are not going to want to go in and if you do get them in and if the hold is not cleared out enough your jump rings won't move they'll be very stiff like a door that hasn't been oiled okay so make sure that you clean out both sides and that you have some nice clean holes and assuming that you're new to jewelry making, I'm going to show you how to do the jump ring. This here is the jump ring, and whenever you open a jump ring, you have to twist it open. And even though this is opened pretty well, I actually have to open it more, believe it or not. Because these puzzle pieces are so thick that it's hard to get in there unless you really open it big, okay? So then I'm going to put this here on and close it shut and whenever I close my my uh, jump ring shut I kind of push it inward like that and it bends it and see how it's now they're touching and then I go like this until they brush against each other and then I check from here to make sure there's no gap and they are even it's perfect okay and now for the other one again I need to open this bigger so it can go on, pass through here, and close this shut. And again, I, I kind of, this is a trick that I do myself, I kind of bend it inwards just a little bit. Okay, and then I make it brush against each other so I have no gaps. And I, I'm a perfectionist, I like to have it perfectly even. 
Okay. And there you go. That's how you put on the jump rings. And I'm thinking about making this one into a pendant because when I started making this, I thought that I was going to need six pieces. So this was an extra one. So I'm thinking about putting this here on a chain and at the end I'll have some beads dangling. But I have to go through my bead stash and see if I have anything that will match the bracelet. Okay? So this is how you do the jump rings. And go ahead and attach all the pieces together. And again, I'll show you this here. I have the 8 millimeter, the larger jump rings on the ends of the puzzle pieces. And you can get these jump rings at Walmart. You don't have to go to the craft store. It's probably not going to be marked on the container. But um, I recently got some there, and they had uh, six millimeters and eight millimeters mixed together in the same container. And there's a lot in one container, so that should be good for you. And it's pretty cheap. Okay, so again, this is my eight millimeter. This is eight. The middle I did six millimeter, and I put some eight O seed beads on the six millimeter, and I did another six millimeter jumping in the back because I wanted to make sure it was strong. And that's it. Okay? This is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching!